What's up guys? Welcome back to Tabletop Never Stop. Hopefully you have some yellow paint left over from painting your House of Clegane units because today we're doing our deep dive into the House Baratheon starter set. So hit that subscribe button and let's get this video started. Alright, so we're starting off with our Baratheon Wardens. They are a 5 cost unit. They're also the base unit for the starter set, so you'll be getting two of them. They have a speed of 4. They hit on force. Their dice line is 7, 5, and then 3. Their defense save is a 3 up, and the morale save is a 6 up. They have two special abilities. Warhammer. If the defender rolls a 1 on any defense saves, they become weakened. And target opening. When this unit attacks, it may expend weakened tokens from the defender as if they were vulnerable tokens. So, a slow high defense unit. Um, this may remind you of the Lannister Guardsmen. And uh, that's probably a fair comparison. Instead of getting some morale uh, shenanigans, uh, instead these guys um, get to interact with weakened tokens. And uh, actually it adds quite a bit of survivability to them. If you attack and the defender rolls a 1, all of a sudden they're weakened. And that of course means when they turn around and try to attack you, they, it'll be much harder to get damage into you. Considering you're already at 3 up defense, you're now, if you can throw out those weakened tokens, uh, they're going to have a really hard time getting through. And target opening allows you to then exploit those weakened tokens on further attacks, um, treating them as vulnerable tokens. So even though you're not rolling that many dice and you're not hitting on, you're only hitting on fours, kind of that ability to generate and then capitalize uh, on those weakened tokens uh, turns this unit into actually a bit of a threat, especially when you're attacking at higher ranks. So four speed is a bit of a problem. That's probably their biggest weakness. Definitely gonna want to make sure that you can march these guys. Don't get them in scenarios where. They're having to go around terrain or other units. It's a pretty solid baseline for the army. Here is our Baratheon Sentinels. They're a six cost unit. They have a speed of five. They hit on threes with a dice line of eight, six, four. Their defense is four up and their morale is seven up. And they have Sundering with their double hammers. So just compared the Wardens to Lannister Guardsmen. And uh, the Sentinels are actually quite a bit like Mountainsmen. Their uh, stats are actually identical but the Mountainsmen get Vicious and Critical Blow while the Sentinels have Sundering. I actually would say Critical Blow and Vicious are probably better, um, especially if you're fighting uh, low defense armies like uh, Umberlists or Free Folk. Um, but of course, anytime you're going up against uh, very high defense, you're not gonna be, you're gonna wanna have Sundering, so certainly not a useless ability. And when we get the Taxis cards, we'll maybe see why Baratheon units are you know, maybe slightly overcosted because they have such an impressive tactics deck to kind of rely on. This is a fine six cost unit. Got that's a decent dice line. Hitting on threes is good. Saving on fours is fine, and sundering is good in the right scenario. If uh, again, if we're coming up against a free folk army, it's kind of hot garbage. It's not going to be doing us a lot of good. Another thing is, you know, here's a five speed unit. Which, um, considering we know we're going to have, uh, we have our slow wardens, um, a five speed unit could be useful. And here's our stag knights. Uh, they cost eight, so now we're talking about an elite unit. Let's see what we get for our eight points. They have a speed of five. They hit on threes with a dice line of seven, seven, and seven. Defense saves of four up and morale of five. And then they have unwavering fury. When this unit attacks, for each of its destroyed ranks, select one of the following bonuses critical blow, sundering, or vicious. So the Wardens are pretty interesting, the Sentinels are kind of boring, and uh, Stag Knights are again a pretty interesting unit. There's a lot to like about keeping seven dice all the way through. Uh, that's really cool. Uh, obviously there's a few other examples in the game of units that maintain or even get better as they take damage, but it's fairly rare. And so that's a pretty powerful ability. Uh, looking at a pretty pretty good morale. I also quite like what we're gonna what I'm calling the um, Swiss Army Knife ability that the Cave Dweller Savages have as well, where you get to pick uh, whatever bonus you like from a list. Uh, that's actually quite nice. Um, it allows you to you know uh, use the right ability for the right time. Obviously, uh, low defense units we want critical blow. High defense units we want sundering, and bad morale units we want vicious. And then on our last rank, the Stag Knights can use two of these abilities, and of course they're still rolling seven dice. So that's all great. Now the problem of course is the cost. And for eight points, this unit's actually not even as good as the six cost Sentinels on its opening uh, opening attack when it's attacking well on injured. I don't know. I wanna like these guys. It's kind of a weird play style. Uh, you're basically inviting the enemy to attack you so you can get stronger. But of course, charging gives you some pretty significant advantages. So you know, basically saying, I don't wanna get my charge bonus 
is um, kind of a weird uh, play style. Um, now again, like I'm complaining about the units, but when we get into the tactics deck of the, uh, the Baratheons, we're going to be like, oh, okay, I see why this is all working. So, you know, this is an expensive elite unit. I wouldn't want to run a bunch of them just because it's not going to give you very many activations, but, you know, one or two of these guys with the right amount of support, with healing and just other units backing them up, I think could be pretty devastating. You know, late game, if me and my opponent are both down to two units, and <laughs> my two units are Stagnites, um, I'll probably be feeling pretty good. That takes us to attachments. Our first one is the Master Warden, who of course uh, is a Baratheon Warden, but can go anywhere. He's a one-cost attachment, and he has Order Stand Your Ground. When this unit is attacked, before attack guys are rolled, enemies do not gain charge, flank, or rear bonuses for this attack. All right, so you're oh, just talking about how um, the Baratheons don't really want to, and also aren't very good at charging in because they're not that fast. So here is a way to kind of survive that initial charge. I actually think this is a really good ability. You can imagine um, marching a unit onto an objective. They're a little bit exposed. You know, maybe a cavalry unit comes in and charges them in the flank. Uh, but if you have stand your ground, that uh, cavalry charge is not going to be very effective. And so they'll you know, be able to live by another day, uh, wait until the rest of your army can come up and support them. Interesting because the Wardens are in some ways not the best uh, fit for this just because they're so slow. So like maybe this, you put this on the Sentinels, they actually can march 10, they can march up and grab an objective. Uh, if we dip into Neutrals, we could put this in a unit of Bastards Girls, which is like, it's a good fit and a bad fit. Uh, it's a good fit because they're fast, so we could march them quite far onto an objective. And uh, when the enemy counter charges them, they're not going to get the charge bonus. But because they're already defense uh, 6, um, you know, getting hit in the flank, they're not really going to get any, it's not, they're already not that worried about that. So getting rid of the, the flank bonus isn't that exciting on them. In the right scenario, this can really, really protect a unit. Uh, it's also worth noting, it says you don't, they don't gain charge, flank, or rear bonuses. Uh, that's only really referring to like the charge bonus of reroll, not, for example, like the bonus that the Knights of Castle Rock get for charging. That's not a charge bonus. It's a bonus that you get while charging. So that's the Master Warden. Very interesting attachment. And also probably a strong counter to something like the uh, Targaryen Calvary um, that we know is coming in the Targaryen box. So um, those guys are going to love charging in. But if you had Master Wardens in every unit, which is maybe not the best, uh, you know, that does limit your options, of course, but it's a very hard counter to an all-cavalry army. Next we have the Stagnite Noble. He's a two-cost attachment, and he has Order, Reckless Vengeance. After this unit is attacked with melee, this unit suffers two wounds and then makes one melee attack targeting the attacker. Alright, so free attacks are a very powerful ability. Spoiler alert, <laughs> when we get into our tactics card, we're actually going to see a lot of access to free attacks. Um, and this is one more. And so it's not unlikely that you might, with Stagnite Nobles and your tactics cards, get like three or four free attacks over the course of a round. And, um, you know, that can be pretty devastating. They generally will not be charge attacks, which are obviously way better, but all those free attacks can really add up. So obviously the trade-off here is A, we're paying two points for these free attacks, and second, we're taking two wounds. So the most obvious place to put a Stagnite Noble is, of course, in the Stagnite unit. That's obviously the you know design intention. That makes a lot of sense because as the Stagnites get damaged, they'll get access to more of their abilities, and of course they're always rolling seven dice, so they don't mind going down to their last rank in that sense. But, um, you know, I would point out that we're now we're talking about a 10-cost unit and a 10-cost unit that is damaging itself. Damaging itself to get extra attacks, but, uh, you know, it's a little bit risky and it's also a little bit putting all your eggs in one basket. So that's a thing to watch out for, but uh, definitely some powerful potential on the Stagnite Noble. And now we are into our commander attachments. It's worth noting, you know, most star sets have two commanders and then they'll have non-commander they'll have non-commander versions of those commanders, either as NCUs or as attachments, and we do not have those in this box. We just have uh, the commander cards, and that's, uh, I guess, because of the loyalty system. Uh, it kind of makes sense. Renly and Stannis cannot work together, so you wouldn't have, so if you had a non-commander version of Renly, he couldn't serve on a Stannis, in a Stannis army. But what it does mean is that uh, we just have less building options than you might have in a normal starter set, so just be aware of that. All right, so here is Rinley Baratheon, the Charismatic Heir. All right, so his attachment gives you Boldness and Courage. 
When this unit makes a melee attack, it is always treated as having one additional rank. If it already has full ranks, it rolls plus two attack dice. And then embolden. Well within short range of this unit, other friendly units gain plus one to morale test rolls. And then finally, loyalty, Rinley Baratheon, your army may never include units or attachments with different loyalties. So we haven't seen too many loyalties yet, but basically what that means is someone with loyalty Stannis cannot serve in an army that has anything that has loyalty Baratheon. And then as far as these actual abilities themselves, uh, Boldness and Courage, this is actually pretty good. It allows uh, units to stay dangerous even as they take wounds. And, of course, in the opening, when they haven't taken any wounds, they're rolling additional dice. I would not put Rinley in the Stag Knights because, sure, he's giving them two dice when they're not injured, but when they're at their lower ranks, they're not getting any benefit from him. Um, so maybe a good spot is actually in the Wardens, especially because in Bolden uh, is giving a morale boost to everyone nearby. And, you know, tucking them into a high defense unit with that ability is probably pretty strong. The Wardens do drop off pretty hard when they lose ranks, so he'll keep them at good fighting strength. Here's Stannis Baratheon, the rightful heir. He uh, grants critical blow to the unit that he's in, and also unyielding, which means that they this unit may never gain condition tokens. And then finally, um, he also has loyalty Stannis Baratheon, just like Rinley does. So, you know, critical blow is good. All units in the army can benefit from that. Uh, interestingly, that means that the Stag Knights, who can get Critical Blow, will get access can use one of their other abilities as they take wounds. And when they're on their last rank, with Stannis, they can actually gain all three of those abilities, um, which would definitely be pretty devastating to anyone that comes across that. Being safe from condition tokens is also pretty good. Kind of depends a little bit on what fo what force you're going up against, but there are probably some lists that would actually be kind of crippled, um, you know, by uh, not being able to pass out condition tokens, and we'll actually see there's a few other ways that the uh, Baratheons can deal with condition tokens in their tactics deck. All right, that takes us to the NCUs. First, we have Alistair Florent, a four-cost NCU, and he has Shifting Loyalties. Alistair begins the game with two order tokens on him. After Alistair claims a tactic zone, after resolving the zone's effect, you may remove an order token from him to move to an empty tactic zone, or switch zones with an NCU already on the tactics board. So Alistair is crazy good. Now this is an ability you're only going to need to use twice in a game, but it's very, very powerful. He basically makes it so that you cannot be blocked on the tactics board. If you, maybe you need to get one free attack off and the enemy's already claimed the attack spot, that's okay. You can claim it and move them off of it. The Baratheons trigger bonuses on, on um, Crown and the tactic spot of the tactics board. And let's say the opponent blocks you to stop these from happening. Well, too bad. Alistair Florent can knock them off and claim those spots anyway. And now you have those spots for to trigger your cards with. The other thing you can do is you can actually bump enemies off of spots that they need. So probably the most vulnerable to this actually is the Free Folk. Because all of their bonus tactics abilities come off of movement. So if they're on the maneuver spot of the tactics board, you can just move them right off of it with Florent. And uh, now they're not claiming it and they can't use those bonuses. Also, one final thing, if you got in some scenario where they've used all of their NCUs and you still have two or more of yours in play, you could actually use Alistair to claim the same spot twice. If they don't have any more NCUs left, you could claim a spot, move them off of that spot, and then claim it again with your other NCU, which is pretty wild. All right, next we have Shira Errol, the Lady of Haystack Hall, who um, I've looked through Clash of Kings, and she's referenced, but not described, and then she does appear in the appendix. So, I think it's interesting they made a redheaded. I'm pretty sure George R.R. R. Martin would approve. He seems to have a thing for redheads. Alright. So, her ability is support of Haystack Hall. Whenever Shira claims a tactic zone on the tactics board, you may remove one condition token from one friendly combat unit, and whenever Shira claims the wealth spot on this tactics board, you may replace one condition token on one enemy combat unit. All right, so I, I like this ability as a three cost unit. You should be able to get to use it, uh, you know, if you're claiming one of these two spots, you'll probably get to use it, you know, between five and six times over the course of the game. That's quite nice. And these abilities um, are not replacing, they're merely little bonus abilities. When we get to the tactics cards for Baratheons, we're gonna find them to be quite good. So you're gonna be, I think you're going to be wanting to claim the tactic spot to get those additional cards. If your opponent is not putting condition tokens on you, then the bonus of being able to remove them is, you know, not that great. 
the wealth one is actually pretty interesting too because again you know we have elite units in this box and we have high defense units in this box both those units both those types of units uh, benefit quite a bit from healing so claiming the healing spot so claiming the healing spot will not only heal your units but also let you place condition tokens out on the board so there's some great synergy there so it's a pretty cool ability for three costs into you that you know hopefully you can use multiple times over the course of the game now we're into our tactics cards at Simon Expo, uh, Michael Chanel told everyone that the Baratheons were going to really punish you for getting into prolonged engagements with them. And then with the stuff that got spoiled there didn't really reflect that. So I remember I was thinking that was kind of a weird thing to say. But now, looking at A, the new versions of the Wardens, but B, these tactics cards, uh, I think that's going to really hold true. I would say the Baratheons are a faction that very strongly relies on their tactics cards. So you need you need to watch out for like uh, counterplot from the Lannisters and uh, anything else that can kind of mess with your tactics hand. But if the Lannisters counterplot you twice over the course of a game, big deal. Uh, you have a lot of really dangerous tactic cards in your hand. So even if they cancel one big one, there's probably another big one coming. All right. So right off the bat, we have hold the line. When a friendly engaged combat unit activates, that unit's melee attacks gain plus one to hit and plus two dice this turn. All right, so nothing too complicated about this. It's got a very easy trigger to use. Round two and onward, you're going to have engaged units that are activating, and um, giving them additional dice and a plus one to hit is going to be pretty powerful. Obviously, like the unit that's going to benefit the most from really all of these is the Stagnite, uh, but you know any any of your units are uh, going to get a nice boost from a card like Hold the Line. Next, we have Last Stand. When a friendly combat unit is destroyed, that unit, that unit will make a free melee attack using its highest attack die value before being removed. And if you control the crown, the defender also becomes vulnerable. Trigger, um, being a combat unit being destroyed, is sort of a good one and a bad one. You're going to lose units over the course of the game, so it's a fairly easy trigger to use. But if you start with it, if you start the game with it in your hand, it kind of is not good because I mean, you're probably not going to lose a unit for a round or two. So you have to either sit on it or or cycle it. So this is the this is a good card, but you want to see it kind of late in the game. The triggers off the crown, uh, if you you know um, that's not especially if you're facing a low morale army, then grabbing the crown spot might make some sense. I would think generally the Brathians are going to want free attacks and the tactic spot to grab more cards. But obviously, if you have the crown and you're getting the vulnerable uh, token, that's going to be nice. Counter charge. After a friendly combat unit is attacked, one other friendly unit may immediately make one free charge action targeting the attacker. If you control a tactic spot, this un that unit may also re-roll any charge distant dice. So we talked a little bit about how Baratheons are slow, so counter charge can actually really help you out there, not even just getting a free attack, which a free charge is of course a free attack. So that's really great, but also just the ability to move um, these potentially slow units up and into combat. Uh, for free could be really useful so uh, counter charge is pretty nice and depending on how far away you are access to the free reroll from the tactic spot could be very critical stag's wit when a friendly engaged combat unit activates remove all condition tokens from that unit if you control the tactic spot instead of removing those tokens you may instead place them on one enemy combat unit they are engaged with so stag's wit is a little bit conditional in the sense that if your opponent isn't ha handing out lots of condition tokens then it's not going to be that interesting or useful for you. But um, against certain lists that really rely on tokens, uh, this could be pretty powerful. Uh, the counterplay, of course, is just to use your tokens as uh, quickly as you can when you're going against the Baratheons. But, um, you know, especially if someone throws Weakened on you uh, and you have this card in your hand, you can just immediately dump it as soon as you activate and not worry about it. So that is great. And, of course, obviously being able to pass them instead is a nice little bonus. I think... You know, a wary opponent is going to kind of anticipate that. Ours is the Fury. After a friendly combat unit is attacked, but not destroyed with melee, that unit may make a free melee attack targeting the attacker. And if you control the crown, they also roll their highest attack die value, regardless of the remaining ranks. So, yeah, another free attack card, which, you know, these could really add up over the course of a round or in a game. And, of course, controlling the crown... Is good if your unit is at full health still then it's not gonna be a big deal or of course if we're using our stagnites and it also doesn't matter baratheon conviction start of the round target one friendly infantry unit and attach this card to them discard it when they fail a morale test while this card is attached if you control crown this unit only suffers one wound from failed panic tests regardless of abilities or role 
and if you control maneuver this unit's defense saves rolls of six block two hits. All right, so start of the round is a fairly easy to use trigger. If you play this early, there's some counterplay the opponent knows is out there. They can try to get rid of it by maybe you know claiming the crown spot and making you do a morale test. And of course, also they can grab those spots to they can grab the crown or the tactic spot to stop you from getting the bonuses. You know, so in that sense, this card isn't uh, like amazing because you're not going to really be able to surprise people with it unless you hang on to it. But I would I would if I had this opening round, I would just dump this on on one of my units. And now I have it. And, you know, maybe I get the bonus, and maybe I don't, but what I do get is, you know, more of my cards out. And if the enemy wants to counterplay to try to stop me from using these cards, then that's totally fine. I've already said, like, I don't think the crown's that good uh, for Baratheons, with some exceptions. Uh, Stannis actually has a card that's going to want you to encourage you to get on the crown. If you're really worried about uh, panic tests, you could um, grab the crown to turn on this uh, protection from panic. Uh, the thing is, actually, that Baratheons already have pretty decent morale, so they're not going to be failing morale tests left and right anyway. Uh, I definitely like it for, I definitely like it for the defense saves uh, rolls of six blocking two hits. I feel like the Brathens are going to want to be claiming tactic spot early anytime they can anyway, and um, you know, sure the opponent might counterplay you, but that's probably that's not going to really hurt you too much because that's leaving lots of other good stuff open for you to grab instead. I think Brathen conviction is not like a huge game changer, but it's very easy to use. You just use it as soon as you get it and. Um, you know, it potentially have some use later on. And finally, Stag's Resilience. I think this is probably my favorite vanilla tactic card for the Baratheons. When a friendly engaged combat unit activates, restore up to D3 plus one wounds to that unit, and if you control the tactic spot, one enemy they are engaged with also suffers that many wounds. So healing is great. You're healing uh, two to four wounds here off a tactics card. That's nice. But the real the zinger here is definitely the automatic wounds that you're dealing to an engaged enemy. I think this is a good use for Alistair Florent to uh, grab the tactic spot and uh, deal those automatic wounds, especially if you were facing a uh, high defense enemy. Two to four wounds slipping right through while you heal is pretty crazy. I mean, there's basically this one tactic card has the potential to create a net change of eight wounds between you and an enemy, which is uh, pretty wild. Um, at the same time, if I'm the Lannister player, this is maybe maybe what I'm holding on to my um, my counterplot for. Although there's you know really almost any of the free uh, activations would be worth hanging on to. So Sacred Resilience is really good, but I also just want to point out there is Ours of the Fury is a free attack, uh, and so is Counter Charge, and um, so is Last Stand. Although that one uh, of course requires you to lose a unit. Uh, those are that's six free attack activations in the tactics deck, uh, not even counting if you bring some um, stagnite nobles, um, which will give you additional free attacks. So uh, the Brathians are going to be rolling dice a lot over the course of the game. All right, so let us uh, move on to our uh, our commander specific tactics cards. We're going to do Renly first. So the Brathians have one healing card in their deck, but uh, there's actually healing in. Renly's other three tactics cards, which means that, you know, he his list has an incredible amount of healing, actually. In fact, uh, in, a Renly, in Renly's tactics deck, including the vanilla cards, you have eight of your 20 cards have some healing on them, which is going to be pretty obnoxious to play against. And I would say that Simon's kind of managed to sneak two factions here on us, like Renly and Stannis are going to play really differently, and that's just off these tactics decks. We haven't even looked at the different units, because we haven't seen them yet. We haven't even looked at these different units that they're going to have access to. So, let's uh, take a look at these cards. First, we have Wealth and Charisma. When you claim a zone on the tactics board, replace that zone's effect with... Choose, either read store D3 plus 1 wounds across any number of friendly units, or remove three condition tokens total from any number of friendly combat units. Uh, restoring wounds, or we are removing condition tokens, obviously, depending on what we need. Of course, noting if you were to replace the wealth spot, that one actually does two wounds and one condition token, which, depending on what your needs, might actually be better. There's a couple really cool things here. One, you can if you rolled if you rolled four wounds, you can actually spread those out wherever you want. And same thing with the condition tokens, you can spread them out uh, in anywhere you need. Another interesting feature is, let's say you were using Shira Errol, whatever her name is, Lady of Haystack Hill. Um, if you were claiming either the tactics or the wealth spot uh, with her, 
you could still use that bonus and uh, what, this card, which is a neat little thing to think about too. If you claim the tactic spot with her, you could remove a condition token with her ability and then heal D3 plus wounds. Younger, bolder, and far more comely. When a friendly combat unit makes a morale test, that unit gains plus two to their morale test rolls. If they're within long range of Rinley Baratheon's unit and pass this test, they also restore up to one wound for each point they pass by to a maximum of four. Okay, so a couple things. One, uh, Baratheons are already pretty good at morale, so getting plus two is going to um, you know, help them out a lot, especially with uh, something like the Stagnites. Uh, another thing is that if they're with if the unit in question is within short range of Rinley, um, then they're actually going to get an additional plus one for being in short range with him. And for that reason, I think this is not so much a card I would use as a counter to say like Cersei being placed on a unit and forcing a panic test. Um, I think instead, like after a unit survives just a normal hit and they have to make their morale test, um, if you play this, there's a good chance you're going to heal several wounds off of it. So that's probably where I would use Younger, Boulder, and Far More Comely. But in a pinch, if you need to just keep a unit alive, um, then sure, give them plus two on the morale test, and um, you know, hopefully they get a couple healing out of it. And finally we have They Will Make Me King. When Rinley Baratheon's unit activates, choose one, restore up to two wounds to Rinley's unit and up to one wound to all other friendly units within long range of Rinley's unit, or deal two wounds to all enemies engaged with Rinley's unit, and one wound to all other enemies within long range of Rinley's unit. A couple things, if Rinley is unit if Rinley's unit is eliminated, this card is worthless. So, you know, that's a negative for it. But um, these are pretty powerful abilities. The long range bubble is actually pretty large. Uh, it's probably pretty reliable. You're gonna get a heal two wounds on Rinley and you know, maybe two to three other units might get a wound back. Um, you know, I'm sure you could find ways to cram more in, but let's not get too hung up on that. Um, the Dealing Wounds is also pretty interesting because I think you probably want to put Rinley in um, a high defense unit, which right now would be which would right now would be the Wardens, although I guess you could put him in the Black Guard eventually too. And so, you know, he's probably pretty survivable, but because he is like giving out all these passive effects, he's giving everyone better morale, um, coming to get him uh, is a thing that enemy might decide to do. So being able to deal wounds that are to enemies that are engaged with him is pretty neat. And of course, there's no reason why you couldn't put Rinley in like the Sentinels. I'm just saying that you know he is going to become a pretty high value target, so you know you might want to put him in high defense. Anyway, dealing out wounds uh, is of course great. Obviously, if we're going against high defense targets, this is even better. Um, you know, this is bad news for giants. This is bad news for dogs. Although you gotta find another way to give a wound to a dog, so they might be okay. If you thought the Night's Watch were annoying, uh, well, uh, I'd like you to meet Brindley Baratheon, because he has uh, just as much healing as they do, if not actually a little bit more. All right, so we're on to Sanus the Manus. Um, and his first text card is Will of the One True King. When you claim the crown zone of the tactics board, replace that zone's effect with one enemy unit becomes panicked, one enemy unit becomes vulnerable, and one enemy combat unit becomes weakened. Trading the panic test for three tokens is uh, probably worth it. And we're going to see that uh, Stannis actually has another Tactus card that's going to interact really well with this. Oath of Duty. When a friendly combat unit is destroyed, attach this card to a friendly combat unit till the end of the game. While attached, this unit never suffers penalties to morale and may never become panicked. If this is Stannis Baratheon's unit, their attacks also roll plus two attack dice. Um, we already talked about the trigger when a friendly combat unit is destroyed. Um, I don't mind having one in my tactics deck. Having two is less good because now we have this sort of nightmare scenario where we open our hand with three cards that say when a friendly commune is destroyed. And those are not going to be very usable for a while. In that sense, this card's a little bit worrisome. It can get us into some trouble. And the Baratheons do rely on their tactics deck quite a bit. So if we get cards that we can't use at the right time, that is going to set us back. That being said, we are going to lose combat units. So... Um, then being able to put a serious buff out is going to be quite useful. Never suffering morale penalties and never becoming panicked is um, going to be really good against a panic list because, um, again, Baratheons are already decent at morale, so not being able to be penalized for it at all is going to make them kind of a nightmare for certain uh, certain lists that are trying to spread panic. And then popping this on Stannis and getting plus two attack dice is great. Um, if he's in a unit of Stagnites, that could get pretty interesting pretty quick. Solid card that's maybe not that easy to use uh, is how I would put this. Um, 
I guess it's also vulnerable to something like Ygritte's ability to remove attached cards. So I guess you watch out for that too. Tactical approach. Start of the round. Attach this card to a friendly combat unit until the end of the game. While attached, whenever this unit makes an attack, after defense dice are rolled, it may expend one condition token from the defender to deal an additional D3 wounds. And if this is Santa's Baratheon unit, it may deal three wounds instead of rolling. All right, so there's a lot to unpack here. First of all, triggers at the start of the round. Um, kind of just like uh, Oath of Duty, we already have a um, card in the main vanilla deck that says trigger start of the round. So um, a little bit of risk there. Again, if we start with a bunch of these, um, we can't use them all at once, and that's not good. Uh, the card itself, though, is pretty darn interesting. Cards attached to a unit, that unit can expend condition tokens to deal D3 wounds. I think it's this card gets exponentially better if you can play it with Sans's unit, since dealing three wounds is so much stronger than dealing D3 wounds. What's cool is you get to roll the dice get to be rolled first. So let's say there's a vulnerable token on an opponent, and they make a bunch of saves, then sure you can um, spend the vulnerable token uh, to make rerolls. But if they don't make any saves, you can spend the vulnerable token to deal additional wounds, which is quite nice. Again, um, Stannis is definitely the unit you want this card on if you can manage it. And let's just um, go through a super ideal scenario here real quick. Let's say the last thing you did last turn was use Will of the One Trick King to dump a bunch of condition tokens on an enemy. Now you're now this new round is starting, and you're going first. So start of the round, you play this card on Stannis Baratheon's unit, who is engaged with a unit that has three condition tokens on it. And then the first thing you do is you claim the attack spot on the tactics board. Now Stannis' unit attacks, it can remove a condition token to deal d3 wounds and so you know it's hopefully really chewed this unit up and or um straight up killed it and now stance unit hasn't even activated yet so it's the opponent's turn and if they don't uh, either run away or get another attack in uh, next turn stance is going to actually activate his unit attack again remove a, diff remove a different condition token and uh, deal another d another automatic three wounds now that of course is sort of the ideal situation, but um, you know that's a potential for six automatic wounds over the course of two turns. Now obviously we did the last setup to accomplish that, and again if we're playing against free folk, that's not really even going to be that exciting because who cares? They are little popping zero point units anyway, but um, potentially quite quite dangerous card. All right, so that was the Baratheon Star set. So I think all we need to do now is uh, you need to go into the comments and let me know if uh, you'll be supporting uh, King Stannis or King Renly when the time comes. And uh, thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you in the next video. Bye!